Hi, my name is Murphy, and this is my channel, Murphy's Every Whim, where I talk about books, because I love to talk about books. I also love to keep track of my books, and that's what I want to talk about today. How do I do that? I started keeping track of the books that I read, the books that I was interested in reading, sometime back in late 70s, early 80s. I'm not exactly sure when, but I got a index card box, some index cards, and on each card I would put name of book, author, Dewey Decimal System, whatever, or maybe a description, maybe why I wanted to read the book, and when I'd read it, I would write notes on the card about what I thought about the book. And I kept this card, index card box for all that time until the 90s, and sometime in the 90s, I started creating a spreadsheet. Actually, I think I started creating the spreadsheet about 2008 when I started my book blog. And so I had transferred the information from those index cards to a spreadsheet and started keeping track of it that way. And I remember now that I wanted to keep track of which books I blogged about and which books needed to be blogged about. That was probably the impetus for creating the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet has morphed significantly over the years. Columns have come, columns have gone. I've changed from just having a file on my uh, laptop to having a, a file in the cloud. I use Google Sheets now, which is good in some ways and not good in others. And I'll talk about that some. And that's the main place that I keep information about books. I also have some data science background. And so I have used my uh, skills at scraping the web to take information from other places where there's, there is a list of books that I use, for instance, off of Libby which is how I access books from my local library, from Library Thing, Goodreads, uh, Audible, Amazon, Chirp, uh, and all those other places that I have accessed books. And so I've scraped that information and several years ago consolidated that information into one spreadsheet. And what I want to talk about today is what I, information I have in the spreadsheet and how I use it. Before I start talking about the uh, columns and all that in the spreadsheet, I want to say that I, because of my data science background, I know this data science maxim. All data is flawed. Some data is useful. And so the question is, do I find this spreadsheet useful? And the answer is yes. I find it useful in several ways. One, it satisfies my need to catalog and keep track of things, which clearly I've been interested in doing this for decades. It satisfies the need to know which books I have, which books I don't have, which books I've read, which books I haven't read. So. And, and having it on in the cloud is great because when I go to a thrift store, or used bookstore, and I'm looking at a book and I can't remember if I have it or not, maybe I've read it, I can open up the spreadsheet on my phone and check it out. So yes, I find this spreadsheet useful. Is it flawed? Uh, in so many different ways. But because it's useful, it's useful despite the flaws. All right, so I want to talk about what's in there. And this is actually the third time I've tried to make this video. 
Uh, frankly, the first time I did the whole thing with no audio, uh, the way I was trying to capture the video didn't capture the audio as well. So that was bad. Second time, it was just even more rambly than my usual ramble. It seemed to be disorganized. And so I'm hoping that this time is the last time that when I look at this, I won't cringe too much. And I will think that it's, while being flawed, might be useful. So let's get started. Uh, the first columns are, uh, the first column is date finished. And I have to say this brings up an issue about using a spreadsheet and in particular using filters in spreadsheets. An advantage of Google Sheets is how easy it is to move columns from one place to another. You can just click on them and drag. A disadvantage is if you've got a filter going and you drag a column outside of the filter area and you filter, it doesn't move the data in that column. And so I had populated the date finish column as much as I could and moved it to the front of the data. Hence, why it's in column B. Column A is now blank, and it is will always be there. I will never move a column beyond column A ever again. Uh, and so I have repopulated column this column, this date finished with as much as I could but I've been working on going back to old spreadsheets and old data, old scrapings to fill that in. I have two columns for title, Lex column and title, Lex title and title. And the Lex title, if you look down to, um, on here it's row 138, it says incredible journey comma the, and then under title it says the incredible journey. So when the title starts with an article, A, N, the, L, la, depending on what language it's in, the lexicographic title is, has that article at the end, and the title column has it at the beginning. And why? So why is because when you go out to a place that catalogs some books or makes a list of books and you're able to sort that list or maybe the list is sorted already sometimes they sort lexicographically so all the these will be together all the a's will be together i have both columns so that when i sort my spreadsheet i can choose to sort it in the manner that the place I'm looking at sorted there. I have a column for the series and the number in the series if the book is in the series. So while the first column has to do with me, when I finished reading this book, the other columns here have to do with the book as it is on a shelf, title and series, but not the author. We'll get to that. In the next screenshot, I also include the next column, column G, which is the quote column. And this isn't populated that much, but uh, when I blog about a book rather than uh, creating a video, I almost always like to have a quote. And so if I decided what quote I'm going to use and I'm not ready to make the blog yet, I'll put the quote in here. Uh, and so, uh, for instance, from Border Songs, which is a very fun book about a non-neurotypical man who uh, works the border patrol between Canada and the U.S. Something just happened in the other room. I'm not sure what it was. I'm alone in the house, so it was a little scary. Um, the, I mean, this quote, some people blamed his oddities on his dyslexia, which was so severe that on that one, here's a flaw in the data, one giddy pediatrician called it a gift. Anyway, so uh, I have a quote column. And there aren't very many of those in there. But the next two columns, H and I, are author and author gender. I'm really bad in the author column about not 
putting secondary authors, illustrators, translators, etc., but sometimes I do. Author gender, I started putting this column in because on Criminali's channel, he once spent an entire year just reading books by women. And so I thought about that. Uh, and, one, and then he talks about, you know, the fact that the majority of his books are by men. He did this. He noticed differences, etc. It's a really interesting video. But anyway, uh, so under author gender, as best I can, I put what the author's gender is. And uh, maybe there, there are two authors and one's male and one's female. I'll put both. If I know that they're non-binary, or I know they're a trans man or a trans woman, I'll put that. I'll put unknown if I don't know the gender, or I don't know who the author is. So that's information specifically about the author. In the next screenshot, I have information about the physical book itself. What platform? Was it on Audible? Is it a paper book? Um, I also have uh, in there Chirp, Libby, etc., um, Kindle. In the next column, format is an audio audiobook, a book. Other things I have in there are ebooks. I've read some books on apps, and I have some floppies, uh, floppy comics. And so, what is the physical format of the book? And then genre is a column I've added just recently, and so it's very badly and uh, sparsely populated. And it's probably, besides the date finish, it's probably the worst column in the spreadsheet uh, in terms of what's there. And so I've been populating it as it goes along. Number of pages, I don't have the number of pages for all books, but you can see sometimes I have the number of pages for Audible books. And that's because when I scraped data from Goodreads, it gave me the page numbers and the year published. And so I thought I would add that as columns. And so I've been, when I add a book to the spreadsheet, I will try to find out how many pages and, and the date year published. The year published column is probably flawed as well because it has the date of whatever edition I might have found and I haven't scrambled around to trying to find always when the first edition came out and so that's uh, problematic. Language, most of those are blank because if it was in English I uh, just left it blank. But it's got things like Spanish and French, which I have read books in. It has Chinese, not because I understand Chinese or can read Chinese, but because I do have book, children's books that have Chinese language in them, but I haven't, I just read, read the book by looking at the pictures. In the next screenshot, I have information about uh, whether I've read the book, whether I own the book, and when I borrowed or purchased it. The reason the borrowed and purchased column is there is simply because, again, when I scraped the data off of the web, that was a column that showed up in some of the data, and so I included it. So probably most of that data comes from Libby or um, books I've uh, borrowed through Kindle, some kind of Kindle program. Uh, status, all of these happen to be complete. I tried to pull screenshots that had a variety of information, but this one I didn't. So status is complete, no, partial, unknown if I just can't remember if I've read the book or not. Why is it in the spreadsheet? Uh, maybe I've read it, maybe I haven't. Maybe it's a book that I've also seen the movie, so I can't remember if I know the story because of the movie. But then also it has reference for dictionaries, um, cookbooks, how-to books, things like that, because I don't plan to read the entire book necessarily, so reference is an option there. And then owned is yes, borrowed, no, 
I think that's all that's in that column. In the next screenshot, we have book information, comments, etc. So this was some of a this is kind of a hodgepodge column. If I just had information about maybe where I got the book and I wanted to remember that, um, sometimes this just has a brief description of the book. Sometimes this has in a complete blog post or review because I happen to put it in my spreadsheet and I just haven't gotten rid of those. I did a little sort so I could get a full page here. And so you can see several things here. One, um, uh, the Moosewood Cookbook, yet another Moosewood Cookbook, as I must have several. I actually want to call some of them, but I just can't. Um, and this particular one had a lot of tabs and dog-eared pages, which probably means I've spent some quality time with this cookbook. Uh, the second one has information about how this was written by uh, Professor Galtney, who's an English teacher at Arkansas Tech. I went to Arkansas Tech. And so information about this, but also information about where I read the book and when I read this book. So I will come through here and look at that date and go put that in the date finished column, which has been corrupted. In the next one, uh, recommended by Susie Bright. I can remember this is porn star um, clerk. The diary or me memoirs of a porn star clerk. And so it was written from a blog. They had written the blog and then they wrote a book and addresses the question of whether porn is good, bad, or neither. So information about what the book was about. There's one that says written as Jeffrey Hudson. So this is an author who has a pen name and has written multiple books. And I wanted to record that uh, information. And then finally, information for YouTube. This is a fairly new column, but as I watch YouTube channels or videos uh, and I get recommendations for books that I think I want to read, I'll put them in the spreadsheet and then put who I got that from. So you can see I get a lot from Gunpowder Fiction Plot and uh, a new one. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, so I think it's pa Pavis Francesca. And you can see for hers, I also wrote a brief description of the book uh, about what it's about. And then I have others from, I mean, I, I get recommendations from, I'd say on average, about six or seven booktubers over time. And so that's the end of the spreadsheet. Again, all data is flawed. Is this spreadsheet flawed? Yes, I talked about some of the problems. Some of the problems are due to the fact that I just simply haven't populated a column. Some because I've changed my ideas about what columns I should have and maybe split a column into multiple columns and haven't gone in and cleaned that up. Some problems because of the nature of editing in a spreadsheet. It does not pr produce reproducible data. So you don't have a history of what you've done, which spreadsheets are terrible for data science and uh, any self-respecting data scientist wouldn't use a spreadsheet. So I guess I'm not a self-respecting data scientist. <laughs> That's just too bad. Um, I don't want to uh, take the time that it would take to code what it would take to have reproducible data. Uh, so, but I also talked about in another video doing cleanup and finding chunks of lines of the spreadsheet to clean up over time. And so sometimes I'll sort it based on, um, I don't know what platform the book is, uh, who the author was, things like that. Take those chunks and do some cleanup because that's one of the things that having the spreadsheet is useful to me, is satisfying my geeky need to organize things and keep track. All right, I do not want to try to create a video about my spreadsheet again. I'm hoping this is done. I do want to uh, make a video about library thing 
uh, sometime because it is something I use that I don't hear other booktubers talk about. And so I'd be curious to hear what other people think. And so I'll make a video about that and how I use library thing. Okay. Didn't tell you what the weather was like. It's nice. Uh, frankly, we've had a lot of nice weather this summer. I'm, I'm very happy about that. However, as always, we need rain. I was having a little bit of a, a drought, not as bad as some places, but uh, it's still, um, the rivers are going down. I noticed a couple of dry riverbeds when I've been out recently, so that's it. I hope to see you next time. Take care. And I have printouts of these. I'm hoping that, uh, and I will have my face in here somewhere. It's something I use that I don't hear other YouTube, blue, then.